So, settle down. Yes, settle down. Yeah. Okay. So, do you remember what all we have learned so far? Um, we learned like the shapes, like how to like, find out areas. Hmm. So, let's go step by step. Let's see what all we recall. Okay. So, what are the shapes that we remember? Uh, we did rhombus. We did rhombus. Uh, we did parallelogram. Okay. You might want to organize your thoughts and go step by step. You'll start with a single line thing. We learned about lines, rays, line segments. Yeah. That was one line. Then we learned about two line thing. That is, that is when it becomes angles. So we learned about different types of angles, uh, which is uh, acute angle, obtuse angle, and right angle. Yeah. Then from two side, two sides, we went to three sides. That's when we learned about triangles. So triangles, we learned about uh, triangles as a prop. I mean the properties of triangles, meaning triangles having three sides and three angles in, inside it. Yeah. We learned about what is the total sum of all the angles inside a triangle. How much is that? Remember? Uh, 180. Yeah. And that is based on the magical formula that we have, uh, that we learned. 2n minus 4 into 90. Yeah. Uh, then we learned about classification of triangles based on sides and angles. So if we talk about sides, there are three types of angle, triangles. One is when the, all the sides are same. That's called equilateral triangle. When two sides are same, that is called isosceles triangles. And when all the sides are different, that is called uh, scalene. Scale. Yeah. So that is based on the sides. Uh, based on the angles, how we can classify them? There are three types of triangles. One is called right angle triangle. When the angle is 90 degree, one of the angles is 90 degree. It's called uh, acute angle triangle when all the angles are less than 90 degree. And it's called obtuse angle triangle when one of the angles is more than 90 degree. Yeah. So that is based on the angles. Now, so we talked about the triangles. Uh, the question that can come to our mind is, uh, can a triangle have two angles which is 90 degree? Imagine a triangle where two of the angles are 90 degree. Think about it. Imagine, so see, when we say triangle, this is what we mean. Yeah? So, there are three angles. It can only have one, that, that's what I'm saying. So, see, these are, these are crazy stuff that you can do with maths. To relate, see, if I'm talking about a right triangle, meaning one of the angles is 90 degrees, okay? If I'm talking about a triangle with two angles at 90 degrees, that means we're talking about something like this. So, this is 90 degree, and this is also 90 degree. This will never be able to form a triangle actually because this will this is going straight, this is also going straight. This is more like two parallel lines. Yeah? So they will not meet and they will never be able to make a triangle. Another way of looking at it is the sum of all the angles has to be exactly 180 degree for a triangle. If you already have two angles, which is 90 degree each, that means third angle is zero degree. What do we actually mean by two? An angle is zero degree. Yeah. Zero degree angle means this line and this line are literally Same. overlaying each other. Yeah. That means these two lines will overlay each other. That is how they will form a zero degree angle. So your triangle will look like this. This is one side. And these two sides, which are making 90 degrees, are actually overlaying each other. This doesn't look like a triangle by any means. Yeah. So mathematically, or, or in a simpler way, we can think that okay, if two angles are 90 degrees, meaning my third angle will be zero degree. How do I make two lines meet each other as zero degree? This is like literally sitting on the top of each other. So that is not possible. You cannot have any angle which is zero degree in a triangle or any shape for that matter. Yeah. If somebody says, this is 90 degree, 90 degree. Let's say if I'm drawing a shape like this, more than 90 degree, this is 
90 degree, so that is 90 degree. But the time axis is 0 degree, meaning the two sides will come, you know, kind of sitting on each other. That is not possible technically. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is one thought that can I have two angles equal to 90 degrees? The answer is no, because third angle will become zero. Okay. Now the question, if I ask, can I have two angles more than 90 degree? More than 90 degree. Yeah. No. No. Because in any under any circumstance, your total angle has to be 180 degree only for a triangle. So if I have one angle greater than 90 degree, let's say it is exactly 91 degree. And second angle is also more than 90 degrees. So let's say it is 92 degrees. I'm not increasing it much. But as soon as I do that, my two angles itself is making 183 degrees. I can never ever have a triangle with the sum of all the angles more than 180 degrees. So this is not possible. You already crossed 180 actually. So not possible. Okay. So that is why if you recall the definition of a right angle triangle, we never say, okay, let me take a step back. When you say acute angle triangle, you say when all the angles are less than 90, that is what is called acute angle triangle. When this angle, this angle, this angle, all are less than 90 degree, okay? But when we define a right angle triangle, we, we don't say when all the angles are 90 degree, that is not possible first of all. We don't even say when two of the angles are 90 degree. We say only one angle is 90 degree. Okay? Because the time you have more than one angle 90 degree or more, that is not a triangle. Okay? Similarly, when you talk about an obtuse angle triangle, there also we say an, an obtuse angle triangle is a triangle where one of the angles is more than 90 degree. You can never have a scenario where you have two angles more than 90 degree. So that's why we say one. So that, that's the definition or that's the difference between the you know, definition of the three types of triangles. Okay. Now, what else we have learned? Then we learned about the shape with four sides. Before we go there, there's one more thing that we learned. Just remember this. This triangle is so very important that we'll use it for much longer time. You might forget about equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle and all, but this, this guy will keep coming to you over and over again. This is a right angle triangle and this will keep coming to us over and over again primarily because this is the foundation of a completely new chapter in maths called trigonometry. The whole trigonometry is based on a right angle triangle. So, what more we learn, more we understand this guy, more easy it will make our learning of the, the subjects that we learn inside math in subsequent classes. Yeah. Okay. Now then we have learned about the quadrilaterals, meaning the shapes with four sides. Do you remember what are those different types of quadrilaterals? Let's try the calling. Let's see how much we remember. We were doing a recap of what all we have learned. Okay. okay. So everything is on the video. I'll not repeat so that we can save some time for learning new okay. things for today. Uh, we just talked about the the shapes, the the two the angles, the lines, line segments, the triangles. Now we are in the quadrilaterals. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just doing a recap and then we'll go back to where we had left it. Also, can I say something? So mm -hmm. what now? At school, we're learning about area of shapes and area of composite shapes. That's Wonderful. No, that, that, cool. let, let's, let's do that today, okay? We'll do that, okay? So, uh, quadrilaterals. Let's, let's look at quadrilaterals quickly. What are different types of quadrilaterals we know? We know about rectangles, okay. no doubt. We know about uh, squares. You guys remember what are the properties of these shapes? We learned about rhombus. Do you remember what is a rhombus? A squeezed version of a square. Okay. 
So I have squeezed the square so much so that you guys will remember if I say squeezed version of a square, right? Okay. Now we learn about kite also. Yeah. Kite also looks something similar to rhombus. Uh, in a rhombus, all the sides are of same length because it's a squeezed version of a square. If I look at a kite, there's a difference. Two sides, these two sides are same length, these two sides are same length. Yeah, that's the difference. Now, then we, then we talked about other shape called trapezium or trapezoid. What is the property of a trapezium? Who can explain? Two sides are parallel. Okay, and that's it. Only two sides are parallel, okay? And if, if, or, or I'll say only a pair of sides are parallel. That is what is called trapezium or trapezoid. But if both the side, let's say this one, so this is parallel to this guy, this is parallel to this guy. What is that called? Parallelogram. Parallelogram. So parallelogram, so the difference between a parallelogram and a trapezoid is when when the opposites, when all the pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other, meaning they will not meet no matter how far you go. When, when both the pairs of the opposite sides are parallel to each other, that is called parallelogram. Okay. And when you, when only one pair of lines are parallel to each other in a quadrilateral, that is called trapezium. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what is the formula for the area of a trapezium? Um, it is base one plus base two times height to divide by two. Base. Say that again. Base one plus base two times the height divide by two. Mm -hmm. no, no. Wait, for which one? Trapezium. Uh, it's think. one half. Uh-huh. Uh, ba a base 1 plus base 2 okay. divided by 2. Um, mm -hmm. Or, oh, it's height, right? Yeah, it's height. Yeah, it's height. Half, so, so the property of trapezium, if you see, let's say this is one side, this is second side, which is parallel to each other, mm -hmm. and the perpendicular distance or the height between these two is h. So, the area of a trapezium is half of height multiplied by the sum of the parallel sides. Is this like that? But you could also divide by two. You this could... is what my teacher taught me. Half, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, this is correct. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to relate to what uh, Mitran said. You said half of... No, I said uh -huh. base one plus base two times the height and okay. divide by two. Okay, okay. No, you, you decide right then. Yeah. So when you said base one plus base two, maybe I got confused. Mm -hmm. When you say base one, base two, here what we mean is the two parallel sides. The pair of parallel sides. Oh. That, that's what. So so yeah, I mean if your teacher has explained it that way, I I will not contradict that, but but yeah. I was thinking that no, uh, we, we call them as parallel lines, so we just count the length of those sides and multiply that by the height or the distance in the two divided by two. Okay. Wait, is this semicircle thing is like 3.14 r squared divided by two? Mm, yeah. Okay, so let's let's go back to area. Okay. So let's let's look at different shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, all the formulas for area or perimeter that we, we are going to talk about today Nothing is done in air, meaning there is always a math, it's always mathematically derived. How is that formula built? Okay. Some of the things I'll be able to explain to you guys because that is easy to understand. Some of the things I may not be because those are derived based on the the, the, the calculus theories, okay? Like the, the differential shapes, the things like Area of a perimeter, uh, of a area of a let's say circle, that's derived in a different way. So I'll not be able to explain everything to you guys because it might be a little too much at this point in time. 
So let's go step by step, okay? okay. Let's, what we need to recall is that area means the space that it takes mm -hmm. on the surface. If I'm talking about area of this guy, there's no formula for this. You have to break this into smaller shapes or the shape for which you know the area. So let's say if you break this and this is a 90 degree, okay? So what happens is this is a right angle triangle and this is a rectangle. Find out the area for this, find out the area for this, add them together. That is the idea of your composite shape. That's yeah. what it's been taught. Yeah. yeah? So that, that's why, you know, uh, in, in few classes, I've tried to emphasize so much on area, the concept part of area. Let's say, somebody says, find out the area of this. Trust me, there is no best mathematician in the world who can find out the formula for this. There is no formula that exists actually. What, what normal people like you and, you and me do? We break this into smaller, simpler shapes. Okay? What you do, you can do is, you can say, okay, I can join these two to make it a triangle. Or, I can probably join these two to make this like a trapezium. So this is my one trapezium. Okay, let me join these two to make this a uh, triangle. Okay, this I can join these two corners to make this like a triangle. This is another trapezium. This is another trapezium. This is a right angle triangle. This is another triangle. Now I add the areas together. Okay, that that becomes your total area. Okay, so when you look at the question, when you have a problem to solve, your attempt should be to simplify it. So composite looks complicated, but the intent is to make it simplified. Yeah, agree? Now, let's look at, so what, what is important then is, we should know the formula and the concept behind for area and perimeter for all the simpler normal shapes. And we can use that for derive the area and perimeter for complex shapes as needed. Okay. Yeah. So let's quickly look at what are the things that we know. Uh, base times height. Yes, base times height. Area is equal to base times height or length times width, whatever you call it. Yeah. Square. Uh, base times height. Huh? Base, base times height. Base or you will just say, because the, the base and height both are same here in case of square, you will say base times base, base times base or length times length or length square, whatever you call it, up to you guys. Both are rectangle, you will use the same formula here, just you know that based on the property, you know, these are same. Just now we learned something. Should I have a side? Yeah. Uh, one half, uh, one half times, times base. Times height. Base, base one plus two. Two. Whatever way you want to remember it, it's up to you guys. Only thing you should visualize or keep in your mind is when I have to derive the area for a trapezium, it is I have to add the two length of the two parallel lines, multiply that by the vertical distance between them, mm -hmm. and divide that by two. Yeah. How you remember? I'll leave it for you guys too figure out okay now if you guys remember it's based on that it's a rhombus do you remember what is what is this line called this line and this line let's say this is a b c d is the other four corners when i join this guy and this guy this guy and this guy meaning when i join the opposite what is this what are these lines called Diagonals. Diagonals. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did I ever teach you guys what is the area of a rhombus? Rhombus. No. No, but I remember really know it. What is that? It's diagonal one times diagonal mm. two divided by two. Exactly. Yes. This is the. Let's see if I call this as D one, diagonal one, and this is D two. So 
diagonal 1 multiplied by diagonal 2 divided by 2. Now you have memorized this formula, but do you know how this formula is derived? 1 half, 1 half into diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. How is that arrived? Let's say for a rectangle we know this is base times height or length times bare. Mm -hmm. Because this is made of this many you know, uh, single units. Okay. Let's say if I this is base, base is 5. So I have 5 boxes here. Of 1 centimeter each. And height is let's say 3. So there, so this makes it 5 times 3, 15 boxes. So length times width. That's how it is derived. This one is based on integration, which is part of calculus. I will not teach you guys now. You, you will start beating me down. That, that, that's complicated at this point in time. Okay? okay. Once we go deep into trigonometry and when we, once we start moving towards calculus, that is when I will explain you how is this formula actually derived. Okay? Now here, for this guy, if, if I am saying this diagonal 1 into diagonal 2 by 2, how is that derived? I will come to that. Okay? That will be one, one important thing for today. Let's, let's look at one more shape that we'll deal with very often. Mm -hmm. Circle. How do we draw, draw a circle? We take a string. If I take this string out and tie one uh, no, uh, stone on the other end, rotate, that makes a circle. Okay. You see the rotating fan? That's a circle. Wait, a circle is 3.14 times radius, right? Radius squared? Yeah, it is. I will come to that. Oh. I'm still uh, kind of making you guys digest what is significance of circle in our life. Yeah? This is a circle. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So basically, now it's, see, the thing to note down is this is the center. Mm -hmm. And from center to you know, every part of this thing, that is the same distance. Mm -hmm. This center to the boundary of this is called radius. radius. Yeah. So now you are looking at the, the wheel of the bicycle that I was that we were looking at. Yeah. This is the radius. What is the here also the two things will come into play? Perimeter and area. Mm -hmm. What is the area? Area equals to pi times mm -hmm. r squared. Pi times r squared. And the perimeter area is also called circumference. It's circumference, equal, yeah. It's equal to Diameter times pi, or it's equal to two, two, two pi, r. pi, two pi r. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Now, now coming back to Arna. So you were saying something that is it three point one four times r squared. Yes, correct. Because pi, the value of pi equals twenty two by seven. So when you uh, when you simplify this, this becomes three point one four one seven or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or you can always use value of pi as 22 by 7. In any calculation, you just, wherever you have pi, you can substitute that by 22 by 7. Okay? Okay. You both remember the formula for this guy also? Circle? Oh, which one? Circle. Uh, the area is pi r squared, where pi equals 22 by 7, r is the radius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And perimeter or circumference, the boundary, is 2 pi r, or you can say, 2 times r. 2 times r is what? It's called the uh, dia. Diameter. 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 Yeah. Which is 2 times r is. So basically, if if I break this wheel into two equal is parts. Is it like r times itself? No. Uh, well, the it's radius. R is times 2. R times 2. Because see, if, if you look from here to here, if I if I'm cutting this into two equal halves, okay, in the middle. So there is one radius here to here. What it is here to here? That is 2 times the radius. That is called the dia, diameter. Or here, let's say this is my center. If I am cutting this into half, <coughs> this here to here is 1 radius, here to here is 1 radius. Mm -hmm. So this this length, the whole length from here to here is called the diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which cuts the circle into two halves. Yeah? Or in mathematical terms we call it Semicircle. Yep. And then semicircle is three, uh, pi times pi times r squared divided by two. Pi, yes, correct. 
and so that is how you can say perimeter is 2 times pi r or you can say 2 times r into pi 2 times r is nothing but the diameter so you can say diameter into but you can say the perimeter of a circle is also called circumference yes, yes. yeah all right so these are the formulas let's quickly look at how this area of a rhombus is derived as diameter 1 to diameter 2 divided by 2. So this is where we will get to practice the composite shapes. Okay? That's why I am stressing on this one. This is a rhombus. A squeezed square. Yeah. So this if this is length. This is also length, this is also length, this is also length. The sides are same. Mm -hmm. And the property of rhombus is when you join the opposite corners or the diagonals, they cut each other at 90 degrees. Okay. And they divide themselves into two equal parts. Meaning, here to here and here to here will be same. Here to here and here to here will be same. That is a property. So that that's, that 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 is something that you and I cannot change. Meaning, if you have a rhombus, you are joining the opposite corners, making diagonals. The diagonals cut each other at ninety degree. Here, the diagonals cut each other at ninety degree, and they divide each other into two equal parts. Okay. Now, so what has happened is this my diagonal I, I can i can break this rhombus into four parts four parts okay so like triangles like four triangles four tr triangles and four right triangles actually mm -hmm. so okay. what is it like it would be like b times h divided by two yeah. times four because yeah. there's four triangles yes correct but that b times h divided into four it will not be the same because only thing that you remember is this diagonal and this diagonal are of not same length because the diagonals could be of different length. Let's say this was my square before, okay? So then I squeeze that a little. I squeeze that a little from this corner, okay? So this diagonal is this way. If I squeeze it too much, this diagonal will be small and this will get longer. So you cannot say or, or remember one thing that the diagonals of the rhombus are not the same always it could depend depending on it can it can it could depend based on how much are the corners squeezed okay. how thin they are made okay mm -hmm. so keeping that in mind what i'm trying to say here is your this this length this length and this length are same this length and this length are same, mm -hmm. but this diagonal and this diagonal are not same. They could be different yeah. because you have to squeeze it more or less. That will determine how 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 tall it becomes. If you are squeezing too much, this side will this diagonal will become small. Other diagonal will become very very long. Yeah. Okay. So here, let's say here to here. This is diagonal one. Okay. Diagonal 1 equals, let's say, A plus B. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm calling this part as A, this part as B. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is diagonal 2. Let's call it C plus E. I'm just calling it, okay? Just to explain this to you guys. Okay? Yeah. Now, other property I explained was, when the diagonals cross each other in rhombus, they divide themselves equally. Meaning, if this is A and this is B, both are same. So it is not A and B, it is actually 2A. A and A. So it, this is A and this is also A. Okay. Similarly, this poor diagonal is also getting divided into two parts by this, this guy. So this is not C and E, this is 2C. So this is C. And this part is also C. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Now I have four right triangles. Okay? So I know this side is A. This side is C. This side is C. Here also this is C. This is C. This is A. 
because they are divided to equal parts. So I'm trying to derive the formula for you guys. Okay, how is the formula of half into diagonal one into diagonal two derived? Okay. Now this is one right angle triangle. <coughs> Area of this guy is half into base into height. So C into A. Okay. Yeah. 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 And this triangle and this triangle are same because see this side is and this side and this side all are same actually. So these are two symmetric. Right angle triangle. Mm -hmm. So I can just say this part of the area equals this into two. Okay. Are you guys with me? So yeah. Far? Similarly, for this guy, let's find out the area of one, and this will be same. So it will be also two times area of one of the right angle triangle. So half. So this into this into C into A. Okay. Now simplify this. This this area is how much? Half into C into A into two, meaning C into A. This is also half into C into A into two. That is also C into A. What is C? C is half of the diagonal. Diagonal two. A, what is A? Half of the diagonal one. Yeah. So the total area is this area plus this area. This area is C into A. This area is C into A. So this equals two times. C into A. Okay. Yeah. Or, or let me not go that fast. I'll say this area plus this area. So C into A plus C into A. Okay. So that becomes two times C into A. Now, look at this. What is C? C equal C is diagonal two. Divide by two. Okay. What is a? A is diagonal one divided by two. Okay. So now your total area of the rhombus has become two times of d one divided by two into d two diagonal two divided by two. Okay. Am I going fast? Slow? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Now, and then I will do tic tac two. That makes it diagonal one into diagonal two divided by two. So all that drama and circus that I did here was only to make you believe that anything that we do in math is not based on an assumption. This is the area formula for the area is derived. Okay. And how did we derive? We just broke down. The rhombus into smaller, simpler shapes. The right triangles here. We just applied the formula and got this formula. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, just because I have bored you guys so much about this formula derivation, you will remember that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't tell me how. I know area for rhombus is diagonal one into diagonal two divided by two. You told us enough. Yeah. So there was reason for boring you guys, yeah. But but the fact is, any formula, anything that you come across, always question yourself. Do I know how it is derived? Try understanding that, because if you understand the core of it, if you understand how is that derived or built, it'll be a good work after that. Okay, you'll not forget it. So. We looked at all the formulas. We looked at all the areas for simple shapes. We looked at rectangle, square, right triangle, rhombus, trapezium. Now, as you guys said, you guys are dealing with composite shapes and the area for that. Did I ever tell you guys what is the area of a pentagon? Is there any formula for that? No, I did no. not. No? So, but first of all, I need to draw a better pentagon. Otherwise, U.S. government will get upset with me. Pentagon, you guys know, right? This is a, this is a, uh, this is for uh, for U.S. government's defense. They have a uh, an office which is called Pentagon, which is in of this shape. That's why they call it Pentagon. Okay. So that's why I'm saying, if I don't draw a good picture of Pentagon. People will get feel bad about it. 
Okay, so this is a pentagon. Do we know the formula for the area? No, we don't need to. You can just join this. Okay. Okay. Then this becomes a rectangle and a triangle. Find out the area for this rectangle, find out the area for this triangle, add them together, that's your area. Now, there's one thing that we have not touched probably, which is area of a simple triangle, any triangle. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is, that we need to do because you will not deal with only right angle triangle always, right? There are other types of triangles also. This is a triangle, this is another triangle, none of these are right angle triangle. So how is the area of, what is the formula for area of any triangle, do you guys know? Um, base times height divided by 2. Yes, base times height divided by 2, meaning if you pick this as a base, then you have to find the height, meaning height as in from the, the opposite corner, the vertex, you have to draw a perpendicular line and find out this distance. This is your height. If you imagine flipping this table, let's say this table or uh, this triangle is flipped and this is made like this. Yeah. If I just flip this triangle and rotate it, okay. Did I do it well? No, I don't think I did it right. So if I'm clipping this triangle, this is how it will become. This kind of looks like that one, right? Mm -hmm. I flipped that. I made it no, stand on, on this base. This base. So th this is not right angle triangle. Okay, let's let's not confuse this with a right angle triangle. I just flip this triangle. It's not right angle. Mm -hmm. So this becomes my base now. If I take this as base, what I have to do is, I have to draw a perpendicular line from here, the opposite vertices, and find out this height. Okay? So, for any triangle, you have, find out which one you want to choose as a base. Sometimes you'll be given the base, and you have to find the area, uh, find the height, or any triangle, any random triangle that you pick up, you decide, okay, this is my base. What is the height? You have to find out the height, meaning from the opposite vertices, you have to draw a perpendicular line, find out the height of this guy, multiply this with your base. If you consider this as a base, then this is your vertices. From here, you draw a perpendicular line, find out this length. Multiply this with this base. Okay? So this is the this is the uh, area for triangle, any triangle. So you don't have to worry about acute triangle, triangle, right triangle, up to circle. Any triangle, half time base times height. Now that is why when we were dealing with this triangle. right angle triangle, we said half into base times height. This is my base and this is my height because this is already perpendicular. So that is why the same formula holds true here. You don't have to derive it because you know the size because they are perpendicular already. You just have to take the height and uh, the length of the sides and multiply them and divide that by two. So uh, formula for the area of a right angle triangle is no different from the formula for area of any other triangle. Only difference being, in other triangles you have to draw that and find out what is that height. Here it is already drawn for you because this is perpendicular, that's it. Yeah? Ooh. Now, if in any, if you are given a sum to find out the area of any composite say, When you are given the sum, draw it first. Draw it first. See how you want to simplify it. 
you can always choose let's say if you're talking about this shape you can just break it apart you can just break it apart and you can choose you can choose this as this triangle this triangle this triangle this triangle or you can say okay no i'll not use two shapes this is a trapezium for me i'll use this as trapezium and then three triangles so it's up to you how you want to break it and it also is a function of what are the things that is known to you so that you can simplify it that way okay now what else is taught to you on this one which you want to cover in today's class apart from composite shapes anything else that you you are learning right now uh we are learning we kind of just went over it okay okay so so what we will do is i will give you guys some sums on this one okay that i would want you guys to do uh in the coming week and tomorrow we will go from two dimensions to three dimensions meaning so far we have been talking about area perimeter we'll start talking about volume and surface area okay at concept level so see my approach is always that i will bother bored frustrate irritate you guys with the concept first enough we'll look at the property what do we mean by you know a certain object what is meant by area what is meant by perimeter what is surface area if you know the concepts then you can relate that concept with different shapes different objects that you see around you and then apply the formula to derive it but it's very important for us to know the concept first the concept should go neck deep here here in your muscles in your in your hand whatever you call it right so that when you actually end up doing maths you people say oh, uh, let's find out the area of a cylinder the thing that should come to your mind oh cylinder i know cylinder is nothing but a circle after circle after circle if i put so many circles one on on the top of each other that's what makes a cylinder as soon as the picture gets painted in your mind then you say oh circle i know i know the area of a circle i know the perimeter of a circle what is that this guy is asking for then you relate that so concept is something that has to get registered inside you so much so that you don't have to struggle to recall what exactly the question is okay so next step is going to be three dimensional shapes that we'll talk about tomorrow we'll not do any formula tomorrow we'll only try relating the the concepts around three dimensional things what is volume what is area what is mass we'll try relating that and from assignment point of view we'll only do the area and perimeter for all the shape that we have done more of a you know a context based thing right i'll give you some shapes ask you to derive the area for them i'll give you some some write ups in question say okay somebody has this you know there there's a there's a quadrilateral with four sides uh, which are equal or not equal how do you find the area i'll give you some composite shapes to find out the area and then you guys can break it down okay okay uh and then in the next uh, tomorrow's class we'll learn the the basic concepts the subsequent class we'll do the form, find out the formulas for uh, area and volume surface area and volume for three, three dimensional objects and then we'll do some sums in next few classes on context based meaning when you are given a literature a two line question a four line question where you have to dig the information from it and then you solve to solve the problem okay. because that's what comes in sat in sat they will not say okay this is the side and find out the area no they will trick you by giving you you know uh, little little bit of summary around it and if you don't read it well you might go down 